What is going on everybody? Today's video is going to be part three of our three ways to make a carbon fiber panel. So unlike part one and two where we just used a flat panel, we're going to use an actual mold on this one. The infusion technique is kind of the next progressive step after vacuum bagging. I'll put a link to part one and part two in the video description below. I suggest watching them because we go over a few techniques that we're just going to kind of skip over in this one um, to kind of just tackle the topics specific to resin infusion. Now the materials you're going to use are primarily the same. You still use your peel ply, uh, carbon is off camera. The one big change is you're going to be swapping out your bleeder or breather cloth for your flow net. Uh, this also goes by infusion mesh, um, infusion media. Um, but that's kind of the one big change. Still need your gum tape and everything, uh, vacuum bag, uh, bagging film. So yeah, what we're going to do is we're kind of just kind of jump right into this. Um, like I said, the other videos kind of go over a few of the other techniques where we go over things like uh, roller cutters, uh, scissors, stuff like that, that should help you out. All right, so very first thing I have to mention is that this mold is already prepped. We use a chemical release agent that I went over in a prior video. We use this stuff from Chemtrend called PMR 90 Easy. Uh, what's nice? Let's see. What's nice about a chemical release agent is it's a semi-permanent release, so you can kind of pull multiple parts without having to, you know, re-release it. Where something like a, a mold release wax, you may have to, PVA, you will have to. So, you know, that's kind of on you to figure out which works for you. Um, but like I said, that's what we use for that one. As far as gum tape goes, we went over this in the vacuum bagging video. But one of the reasons I want to use an actual mold with some shape to it to kind of highlight the importance of pleats. So you can see I'm doing a pleat here. And this pleat is a little bit taller than, you know, this point of the mold. So when we put the vacuum bag over it after our layup, the vacuum bag has enough slack in it to go over all of these edges and contours. And I generally put a pleat in line with any time there's like a big rise or any shape of the mold and you can't go wrong with too many pleats we'll run down this side real quick and if I didn't mention it yet I will put links in the video description below of you know as many materials as I use or tools like these non-stick scissors are really nice um, or whoever I get my materials from, I'll put a link to their website below as well. So there you go. Um, pleat in line with where the mold has some shape. All right, so we're ready to start our layup. For video purposes, I cut all of our materials. Uh, when I do uh, infusions normally, one of the nice things about infusions is you lay up your materials dry so I can kind of like set up you know two three molds and as I cut the carbon put it on all of them and as I cut the peel ply put it on all of them so you know that's one advantage already um, so yeah we're gonna put our first layer on since there is some shape to the mold we are gonna use a very light light mist of some spray tech and the other uh, slightly weird thing for this layup is the customer only ordered the driver's side, so we're only going to be laying up half of the mold. Um, and in case anybody's wondering, these are our splitter side plates. I'll put a picture up real quick of exactly what we're making. Might make it make a little more sense. So check for any strands or anything stuck to the carbon. Alright, 
So you want to make sure there isn't any bridging on any time anything has a shape. So bridging would be if the carbon gets stuck up here and gets stuck down here and the carbon just kind of skips this curve, that's bridging. All right, so next layer. All right, so there you go. Once you get the first layer on, subsequent layers, you can kind of just move a little bit quicker because you're not worried about the weave as much. And this is a biaxial fabric. It probably should show up on camera, but it just has a different look to it where the carbon ends up going on angles rather than all forward or straight. They end up going, how would that be, like 45s. So that way you kind of just get a nice even layup with the same amount of fabric running equal directions. Alright, so carbon is on. Next layer is peel ply. We're using the blue peel ply again. White peel ply would be nice maybe, because you could kind of tack it on and put it into place, but even though this mold has some good shape to it, it's not a big, big deal. And then our flow net, which goes over the part, uh, or you know, the, the laminate itself. As you can see, we kind of undercut it a little bit. You don't really need it to go beyond the part. You're just wasting material at that time. And just a little bit of tape to hold it in place. No, it might not stick to the peel ply. Let's do this, we'll do a long one. There you go, plenty good. All right, so we're ready to start putting the bag on. And as we work our way around, we're going to put our vacuum line and our feed line in it as well. Alright, so I'm ready to put our vacuum line in. The other thing I'm doing is adding a piece of peel ply. Just so this piece of peel ply makes it up and touches the other peel ply. It just helps get the vacuum to the part without having to run the vacuum line all the way to the part. And it also gives you a nice resin break as well. All right, so we're hooked up in the oven, ready to go. We got our vacuum line on this side, our infusion line on this side. Uh, we're gonna pull the vacuum on it and start our infusion. Now, as you can see, one of the nice things about infusion is I'm actually doing this video across two separate days. Um, so you can kind of, you know, start a layup if it's the end of the day or you got to call it quits for whatever reason, you can do that. Another thing you can notice is as the vacuum getting sucked down, you can kind of work the carbon into any edges or corners and curves. Make sure you don't have any bridging. And that's a benefit that, you know, the more complex shape you have, you know, the more of a benefit it is. All right, so you might be able to hear it. You can hear a lot of air getting sucked out because our inlet line isn't clamped off yet. And that is on purpose. So with the inlet line not clamped, there's pressure, but not a lot. So you can kind of continue to work 
any carbon, any material into any corners. So as soon as I clamp off this line, you'll hear the bag really suck down and the, the pump, the vacuum pump in the background will probably even change. All right, any last checks for any bridging or anything? And we'll go ahead and clamp it. We'll listen for any leaks. The, the two most common places for leaks are at the bottom of pleats or in the corners where the two pieces of gum tape overlap. Just give them a good mush and you should be okay. So looking at the vacuum gauge, I think we're good. So we got good vacuum. We're gonna go mix up some epoxy and start our infusion. All right, so we're ready to mix our infusion epoxy. Now, if you do infusion, you need a special infusion epoxy, which has a much lower uh, CPS, uh, centipoise, than regular hand lay epoxy. On the data sheet of whatever epoxy you use, there should be some sort of CPS rating, which is the viscosity. Think of it like oil. You got different weight oils. Um, or drinking through a straw. It's much easier to drink water through a straw than a milkshake. So infusion epoxy, um, so infusion epoxy is much thinner than a regular like hand lay epoxy. Um, Quick note, you can kind of infuse hand lay epoxy if it's a real small part, but it's usually so slow getting sucked through the part, it's not a good idea. Alright, so this is a small part, so I don't need much. And just like your hand lay epoxies, you have your choice of fast and slows and all that. So it's a very small part. It's early in the morning, so the shop's cool. We're just going to go straight fast at the ratio we need. Alright, so epoxy's going in. I'm ready to start infusion, infusing. Nah. We're ready to start infusing. Alright, so you can see the part starting to get wet out. No air bubbles are, are kind of leaking in yet. Um, yeah, so at this point, we just kind of let it go. I keep an eye on it, um, you know, because you never know if there's like a little tiny pinhole, or sometimes if you don't put, press down a pleat, air will kind of make it through that pleat, and you may not see an air bubble until up, you know, halfway through the part or something. So anytime you do an infusion, just kind of keep an eye on it. But, you know, once you get going, this is kind of it. You just kind of wait for it to finish. This is probably also a good time to go over like an alternative um, infusion setup. Being such a small part, we just kind of did the, the hose with um, some net stuff in the end to kind of let it wet out. If you're doing a much larger part or you need a faster infusion, doing a vacuum tee with some spiral wrap off of it will allow the epoxy to flow out much quicker. Um, but again, on, on small parts, it's kind of one of those things you need to figure out for yourself. Now one more thing to note, if the infusion funnel or the bucket is higher than your inlet, it could almost siphon in and you end up getting like epoxy, it's called ballooning, where the epoxy will just kind of like flow into the beginning of the part quicker than it can flow through the part. Um, so you kind of want to keep an eye out for that. So I just put a clamp on it to slow it up a little bit. If you just have um, like the cup Let's see if you just have the cup that you mixed epoxy in and just like set it somewhere here or lower you don't have that issue I like this setup it's just a little bit easier it's just something you have to keep an eye out for
right, so as you can see, the part is nice and wet out. I'm gonna clamp this off down here. All right. So as you can see in time lapse, you know, once I kind of pinched this off, there was still enough volume in it to make it the rest of the way. And then our resin brake is doing its job. Air can travel through the peel ply, but it's really hard for epoxy to make it through the peel ply. So at this point, you know, we're pinched off. We're just gonna let it cure and demold it when it's, when it's finished curing. All right, so demolding the part is just like our vacuum bag video. Just yank off all your consumables. All right, now that our consumables are off, you're gonna need a plastic release wedge. You usually see something a little more similar to this. I have these, um, they're kind of more for like automotive trim removal and stuff. I like these because they're actually like a little bit sharper, I guess is a uh, way to describe them, but I'll put links to these below as well. Um, but yeah, if your release steps were done correctly, oops, there you go, should just pop right off. And you can see the finish on this is practically like void free. So that's one of the reasons I really like infusion of more than the other techniques we showed. It is a little bit more involved, um, but the results you get are much more consistent and just, you know, nicer surface finish. So there you go. So now you have the uh, steps, tools, materials to do infusions. I hope you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you learned something. Also hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. As always, guys, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next one.